I like this. You like that. This is what's this one again? This is Renaissance from the House of Zojo. Whoa, that's good. I like expensive. That. It costs a couple dollars, but she gonna yeah. pay more attention to that cologne than she do that Gucci yeah. boat, you yeah, know. Yeah. And and like cologne is it's an affordable luxury. I'm what they fear, black man with intelligence. Ghetto fab splashed with a dash of elegance. Well spoken, but could tell him hood. Attitude funky, but that boy be smelling good. Not just a rapper, I'm a poet. They point out all my flaws, but fail to mention my heroics. Through the ages, different phases went from playing with razors to those sake of honor blazers. No more child's play, we grown. Less bottles of Patron, more bottles of Cologne. It's like a cheat code to make a coochie melt. She paying more attention to your fragrance than your Gucci belt. So go to Bloomies, cop a bottle or two. Get some sense for your girl, cop some bottles for you. I'm giving out lessons. Come and take a part of this class. Before you spray that fragrance on, make sure you wash your ass. Look, that's just something that I got to say. Step your collection up. No more Axe body spray. So in a sense, so what a hater gonna tell me? I'm Kobe when it comes to the colognes. You smell me? Ladies and gentlemen, yours truly, the salt in the sense, even in his absence, I remain. Kobe, when it comes to the cologne collection, the freestyles is flagrant. Today, we talk in fragrance, and I have a very special guest, the globe trotter himself, <laughs> Mr. Tony Rock. What's good, bro? What's good, What's my deal? boy? How's everything? Glad to my see man. you, man. Thanks now, for having me, bro. Thank you for, for coming, man. Um, it's a funny way that me and Tony met. Yeah, I, I was swear I was hoping you would get into it. I, I swear I was But, but, I but you could it. tell the story better than me. So can you tell the people I, how you and I became acquainted? I am a New York traveler. I'm, I'm based and born and raised in Brooklyn, but I am worldly when it comes to New York City. Right. So I go anywhere. I'm right. in the BX. I'm in Harlem. I'm here. I'm there. And I was at the Rucker, and I see Bones, and I'm like, <laughs> yo, that's Bones Brugante. So I walk over <laughs> to say hi, and this dude looks at me like... And I'm like, wait, <laughs> for a, a split second, I thought, oh, maybe that's not him. And I was like, oh, you're not Bones Brigante? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan, man. But I blew him away by being a fan. Right, right. And who I am, I guess, you know, he was shocked that somebody of my stature was a fan of his, which I am a super big fan, super big fan. Thank you. And uh, he was like, he didn't know it was me because he didn't think I knew who he was. So when I got the tap on the shoulder, because, you know, we in Harlem, I'm just thinking it's going to be somebody from yeah, the hood. yeah, yeah. So I turn around and I see you. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> and then you told me, you was like, yo, like keep keep going. And that was a time where yeah. I was kind of like in a slump, not really doing much. So to know that somebody who works as hard as you do yeah. is, is is giving me that encouragement. I yeah, I think I was that. like, what's the, what's yeah, the next? Yeah, you like, like yo, what's, what's going, going on? on? Yeah. I'm like, bro, I got to go to work. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, Dude, you know I, mean? I, I mess with it, man. I, I, I'm definitely a fan, bro. Nah, I appreciate definitely. it. So, um, you know, I talk a lot about the colognes in my collection. The thing about colognes is they're very subjective. So right. people been hearing me talk about what it is I enjoy for years now. So I wanted to bring three different scents, get your opinion on each scent. Okay. Um, you live in L.A. now. Yeah. Wait, before we get into that, how did you get so immersed in the cologne culture? Like, you really know... Just now, before we even started talking, you recording, you were telling me about the differences and the creeds and all that. Right. What was it about the colognes that? Well, you know, it just, you know, being hip hop is such a like, I got this and you ain't got that type right, of culture. Right. Right. You know right, what I mean? Right. Um, and everybody's got sneakers and clothes and cars and jewelry, and um, I just got into colognes, and I just realized like it was just it was a, a me thing. Right. You know, it's like a lot of people not really dug into it the way I am. And I'm like, I'm low key like a nerd. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like a geek. So okay. once I find out something that I'm interested in, I just dive about it. head first into it. So um, one day I, I didn't post on my gram for a while. And I just, I say, I got to post something. Mm. So I just snatched up a few bottles that I had. And I was like, yo, I said, yo, hey, chick going to pay more attention to your cologne than she do your Gucci belt. Right. And I got on the train and I, I get all these notifications and messages. And I'm talking about dudes from the town who got big cars and they, yo, where you get that? And I'm like, damn, y'all don't know about Cologne. Right. So I just I just understood, like, you know, it's, it's unique information, you know. So I just I said, man, I'm gonna dive head first into this. And, just, and you know what? When you when you're young growing up in New York City, as a kid, like when you're trying to be have a look, right. first it's your sneakers. Right. So you first into sneakers when you're like 10, 11 years old. Right. If you got some nice sneakers on, you in the game. The rest of your outfit don't really matter as long as yeah. you got some cool sneakers on. Right. Then it's a fresh cut. 
If you keep a fresh cut and some clean sneakers, you good. Good. You don't have to have on you the good. name brand here and here. <laughs> right. But if you got clean sneakers and a fresh cut, you good. Right. And then to set yourself apart, I always thought was the scent. The scent. I thought the smell good yeah. was always the thing. Even so when I went out to the club, it was like, yo, everybody going to be fresh. Right. Even to this day, like I'm in Vegas, I'm in LA, I'm wherever. I know everybody gonna be drip. Everybody right, gonna be, right. But if you got that you smell got good that to set scent, yourself apart, you the guy that gets this. Part, right. You Who is that? Get, yeah. What, what's that you got? Yeah, on? what you got on, you know, right? What, what is that? And you out, you, you, you set yourself apart from everybody else. Exactly. So you you Vegas, LA, you travel a lot, but you stationed in, in LA. That's yeah, home for yeah, you yeah, now. Yeah. Mostly warm weather, right? Yes. So uh you have fall scents which are more complex, and the warm weather scents are mostly citrus based. So I bought three Top-notch citrus-based scents from my collection. Okay. We're going to talk about this. Do me a favor, though. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, and share it with your friend whose house smells funny, because chances are if the crib stinks, they do too. You ready? <laughs> let's go. All right, let's get into this. This first one is Creed Virgin Island Water. All right? This is often described as vacation in a bottle. Vacation in a bottle. I and like you know, that. I like Somebody that. who travels as much as you. I think you. Oh really yeah, like that's that. real. Summary like uh, right white tea. Yeah, you know this was uh, man. That's good. It was actually inspired by a sailing trip near the Ginger Islands in the Caribbean. Okay, now so I I was telling you earlier I have a discovery set you call it right right I got it for my birthday it's a uh, Creed it's five different scents right and uh, the Aventus is the one I I use the most right so that that's the masterpiece fragrance of of all scents Aventus. Uh, Baccarat, they get duplicated so much by mm -hmm. different fragrance houses. And um, a discovery set is when you get like different scents from a house. Uh, colognes that make only colognes are called houses, okay. niche houses. Okay. So you got, you said you got Creed Aventus. I have Aventus. I have, I, I know I have Aventus and I have, a, what's the other one you mentioned? The Green Iris Tweed. I have that and then I have three others I don't know, remember the so names of. So Green Iris Tweed was made to smell like I don't know if you noticed the nap, but when you go back to it, it's it's a, a upper echelon version of cool water. You remember cool oh, water? Oh yeah, of course. cool From water was my go-to. Right, right. That was my cool water we had in the glove box when we went out. Me and right, my boys, right, we had right. It like, we had, and it was weird because those four dudes all smelled the all same. All smelling the same, right, <laughs> we right. We were all in the, in the, at the bar chilling and we right. all smelled the all same. All smelled the same, yeah. classic scent. I hope you're not keeping your colognes in glove boxes no more. No, 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 no. no right, yeah, no, you want to keep your cologne in a cool, dry place. Yes. All right, that's going to... Preserve it for the longevity and stuff like that. So that's a, a heightened cool water. You said it's a it's it's a top shelf cool water. Okay, is good. Essentially good to know. Good to know. That's right. a, so that's my little throwback when I want right. to smell like exactly when I want to smell like uh, going back to Bentleys back in the days. Right, right, right. So let's get this out the way. You funnier than your brother. Come on, man. Listen, you listen, 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 listen. listen. You could be humble all you want, but if we talking when it comes to anything you do, whether it's basketball. Even rapping, you got to do it often. And right. you are on stage every night, it yes. seems. Yes. Like, I might be following somebody from Texas, and they on a story, yo, I was with, yo, I went to Tony Rock yeah, show. Yeah. He funny as, they say, he funnier than his brother. They'll say it. It's, it's debatable, bro. It's, it's two different styles. It's two right. different styles. It's two different styles. I think my style is more, leans more towards the audience than my brother's. My brother doesn't do crowd interaction. He right. doesn't say like, where you from? And right. make fun of somebody's jacket or whatever. He's, when he's on stage, he's, he keeps the barrier right. between the audience and himself. So if comedy is battle rap, you would be- I'm Bones Brigante. Nah, nah, nah. You, <laughs> you, because I picked apart your style, like how you go into the crowd. I've seen you go 45 minutes just in the crowd. Yeah. No, no, you, you veered off of your set, and you going straight like this is freestyle. That's like that's what DNA does. But you know what? When I was when I started out and I was trying to develop material, like really trying to write every day, which I still do. Right. And I would hit like writer's block. I would go on stage and tell my boys, like whoever I had with me, yo, time me, see how long I could go without telling a written joke. Right. Because all of that interaction, I'm gonna find something later on that I'm gonna go back and write a bit about. Okay. So it's literally like trying to write in real time. Right. So I'll go on and my man, where you from? And whatever that is, and yo, this your girl? How long have been together? And they always, always, always say something that's like, okay, I got a nugget. Right. It's like it's like panning for gold. They right. always gonna give me a nugget that I'm like, okay, I could take this and make a written bit out of. Right. But it started from crowd interaction. So what's 
the thing I admire about comedians, like I said, y'all pound the pavement, yeah. like like night in and night out, and that's what keeps you sharp. And um, what's the most shows you did in one night? Uh, I did eight shows in one night when I was in New York City, like on the grind. When I was in, I was a regular at every comedy club in New York. Right. And on a Friday, Saturday night, you know, every club used to have an eight o'clock show, a ten o'clock show, and a twelve o'clock show. Right. So you could do stand up New York eight fifteen, run across town to stand to the comic strip, do right. the eight forty five. Go down to Dangerfields, do the nine thirty, run over to New York Comedy Club, do the ten. So we did that one night, and I did eight in one night, and that's not even the record. I right. think Dave Attell has the record for like I think 14, 12 or fourteen. Fourteen yeah. shows in one night. Yeah, because the cellar used to have three shows a night, and then there was another cellar right around the corner. Right. So you could do that's nine in in one block. You know. So another thing I admire about comedians, comedy stand up comedy is like the only sport where like you're expected to fuck up yeah. you bomb yeah right yeah the you, reality is that's the reality but yeah. that's the reality of life right you're gonna fuck up before you get things right you know how, how has there ever been like you could go to eight different spots right same material each yep. different spot yep. and you'll bomb in one and killing the next absolutely. right absolutely do you still bomb to this day I don't bomb like in the sense of like boo get out of here. Right, but right. I'll sell a joke one spot and it won't work as good as it worked there. Right, like that. That's a reality. Like right. you, said, you know, I compare it to I compare it to the skateboard culture. Like I, that's why I love the skateboard kids. Right, because skateboard kids know one hundred percent you gotta bust your ass to get right. good at this. You right. have to you fuck have to. yourself up to get good at this. Right, nobody that rides that skateboard really that's nice with it doesn't have horror stories of yeah. when they broke a bone or. Right. Chip the tooth or fracture, fracture the wrist. You have to do that to get to that. Right. And stand up is that. Stand up is like you gotta fall, you, you have gotta to. bomb, you gotta get you booed, to. you gotta have the comic after you be like, damn that motherfucker, boy. Right. <laughs> to get good. <laughs> right. And once you get through it, then you're good. Everything right. is hard in life before it's easy. Exactly. Everything. Exactly. Remember, you couldn't ride a bike. You thought I'll never get this. Right. And then you mastered it. Now, now right. it's like now people literally it's a saying like it's like riding a bike because once yeah. you got it. You got it. You forever. got it. All right. So you got it. No more bombing. No more bombing. All right. All right. We're gonna get into this. I hope I didn't just jinx myself. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. You well, I think like your style, you you improvise so much because I've seen people just try to stick to their bits and their yeah, sets. Yeah. And like I, I read Rodney Dangerfield's book and he said, yo, you gotta write a hundred bad jokes to get ten good ones. Yep. And he said, you know, if you got a set that's 45 minutes and you're not getting them reactions, that 45 minutes is gonna turn into 10. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and then you're gonna want to get out of it. I mean, I've bombed. I've got on stage and people booed me, and I, before I really got into like really studying the nuances of stand up comedy, just understanding, yo, you have to do that. Right. You right. gotta get right. up there and fuck up. Red Fox said you're supposed to write a joke every day. End of the year, you'll have 365 jokes. Eight of them will be good. <sighs> That's like writing rooms. Yeah. That's like writing rooms. All right, we're gonna get into this second cent. This is from the house of Zerjov. And this is Renaissance. Renaissance from the House of Zerg. Okay, this one I'm 100% unfamiliar with. Okay. Well, we're going to get And what's, one, what's this one described as? Give okay. me another. This one analogy. right here, this was made oh, to man. smell like the Renaissance Ooh. period in Italy. And it's inspired by wealth, beauty, and the heritage that the country possesses. I like this one, man. So this has got lemon, tangerine, bergamot, mint, rose, musk. Amber and patchouli. Wow, this is, I like this. You like that. This is, What's this one again? This is Renaissance from the House of Zerjo. Whoa, that's good. Like Expensive? That. It costs a couple of dollars, but she gonna yeah. pay more attention to that cologne than she do that Gucci yeah. boat. You yeah, know? Yeah. And, and like cologne is it's an affordable yeah. luxury, you know. Um, we spend money on sneakers, like I you like said. That. We spend money on cars, all of this stuff. You may not be able to afford a Dolce & Gabbana sweater, right. but- you can afford a dose of Uncle Bonner cologne. And you know what? You you spend money on the car and then you have to park it to go in the club anyway. Exactly. You spend money on the belt and then you put the shirt on, it goes over it anyway. But the cologne, the cologne stands is, out at all times. And what happens is you have the top notes, which that's what you're gonna smell like when you first put it on. Then you have the heart, the middle of it, that's gonna smell like an hour, two hours into the scent. And then you got the base. And the base is what you're gonna smell like for the rest of the day. Oh, so the scent changes. It changes. It has to really? grow. That's why you're never supposed to do this. Okay. You spray right there because yeah. the scent has to graduate and develop into all of those notes. Like those notes that I just described, they're in each part of the scent. So it's like wine tasting almost. Yeah. That's okay. why I said I, I, I just figured, okay, once if I could become cultured on this, you know, um, 
I mean, it's dope to me. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? No, you so, just put, you just literally put me onto one right there. I like that. I, well, I might have to go cap a bottle are, of that before I go. Hope you uh you, you could explore different venues. I I try to go to a. There's a lot of discounters that sell them, but right. if I'm gonna buy from a department store, I want to talk to somebody that's knowledgeable. Because a lot of times you go in them stores, they just trying to spray you like right, 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 yeah, yeah. Like I yell and be like, yo, come on, you can't even tell me nothing. So about this me. is uh what Saks. Sacks, Bloomies, yeah, you okay. go there, you're gonna find that in there. Now you went to like the, the the Book of Hoves exhibit the other day. It was inspiring. It was uh it was motivational. It was uh it was it was like emotional almost, man. I was like, right. damn, like he really because it's it's like the whole wall is like his videos playing in from room to room. Right. And you hear him telling the story like they wouldn't give us a record deal. Like we literally could not get a record deal. So we just had to do it ourselves. Right. And then we went into fashion. It was because they wouldn't let us, you know, they wouldn't send us pieces. And right. we like, okay, let's just do it ourselves. And he's like, that's what our culture has always been based on. It's so like, we saw, we saw like the growth of Rockefeller in real time. Right. So you being from Brooklyn, Bed Stuy, just yes, like yes, Jay Z. Yes, yeah. um, you still were able to pick up on bits that that were real informative, even though we saw it like when Absolutely. it was actually happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's clips of him on like podcasts, clips of him on radio shows, and right. stuff you probably didn't hear. Right. It's like, oh man, I, that's he, he's he's laying it out. He's like he's he's laying out the blueprint. Right. Like you got to really. Everybody knows this. Like you really got to believe in yourself. You got to have an unbelievable sense of I can do this to do what you do, to do what I do, to do what he does. To play ball, to right. whatever the thing is, you have to have an unbelievable sense of I can do this. The dream is bigger than the job. Yes, everybody's every naysayer in the world doesn't match up to your belief in yourself. Right, Very and true. it's like as I'm walking through there, it's like man, this guy is from the projects, and look what he did. Right, I'm looking at the lines of people trying to get library cards and people taking pictures, and it's like. That the library hasn't had this much traction right. in the year. <laughs> I forever, literally told my right. man, like, yo, I haven't been in here. I'm from Brooklyn, born yeah. and raised. I was like, I haven't been in this library in maybe 25 years. Right. And it's only because of this that I'm actually here. Right. You know, so it's like that foot traffic is like, he did that. He did that. Jay right. did that. You right. know what I'm saying? It was a little upsetting that he didn't have any uh, footage of Dame and Biggs. Wow. There was a couple of pictures where you see Biggs like on the side walking out the room. But it was nothing that said we did this together. It's like, beans in there. You don't see beans. No you beans. see a, a few pictures of Meek. I mean, Bleak. A Bleak got to be. But yeah, you that's... didn't see anything that said we did this together. If, right. If you didn't know Jay Z, if you just landed on this earth yesterday, you would think, oh, this guy did this whole thing by himself. Right. And we know. And we know, right. That, you know. Right. So that was a little upsetting. Like, come on, man. Like, at least I know you're not together now, but yeah. you can't say that, you know, mm. it wasn't built on this. I'm gonna have to go check that out one of these yeah. days. This, this um, really, they extended it to October, so you should go check it out. I'm gonna go see it. Like any hip hop head should go yeah, see this it. Week. It's, it's I'm definitely gonna go see it this week. This writing strike that's going on right now. Yeah. Are, are you impacted by that? Uh, theatrically, yeah, but comedically not. Like because because you do stand. The beauty of comedy, anything happens, we could go on the road. Right. Even the pandemic, it was a lockdown. The first people working were comics. Right. The first people back out on the road were comics because everybody wanted to get out the house. And it's like, if we get out the house, we got to see something. Let's go see comedy. Right. So comics were working first. So the, the virtual the, shows. And, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, the, the Zoom shows, I didn't do too much. You didn't do I need an audience. I need to, to Yeah, to interact. Know. Yeah, that's but, your uh, style. The, the, the strike doesn't impact us theatrically. We, mm. Nobody's auditioning. Nobody's pitching shows. Nobody's. So you know, like, how, how much longer you you see this going on? I don't for? know, man. Like, like you, this is that this type of shit has ever happened. So what does and it they mean? Like over a percentage? They fight. Right. They're not even fighting over like. 50-50, they fighting over like 2%. And I saw something that said like that 2%, like if the top execs in the game, if they sacrificed a fraction of their salary, it would be able to take care yeah. of everybody. Yeah. That's nuts. Yeah. Because now what it is, is what streaming is so big that a writer will write a show, get paid for writing on the, for writing the show or writing on the show, and then once they sell it to streaming platforms, the producers and the studio still get money. From right. the streaming from the streaming platform, but the writers don't get any money. Wow! So you you write a song, we put it on here, and you get paid from that. But then we put it on here, and the 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 net the the, the label gets paid, but right. you don't get paid. But you don't get it's paid, here. right? Yeah, yeah. I saw one of the, it said that um one of the guys he sold what was that thing on Netflix? Oh, uh, Squid Games. They Squid, said Squid. He, he didn't get nothing yeah. from that. He sold eight hundred million. Eight hundred million. He didn't get nothing from it. Yeah, that's nuts. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, you know, when you're chasing this dream, you got to eat shit. But I mean, yeah. yo, if I make 800 million or something I made makes 800 million and I don't get a piece of it, I'm going to be a little pissed. Yeah. And he, for 13 years, they said, for 13 years, he's been pitching that show. For 13 years, he was sitting down with networks like, right. listen, Squid Game, Squid. And then when they finally said, we're going to do it, I think he gave up a little bit more than he wanted to because right. he was just, just to get just it. like, yeah, I've been doing I this just, for 13 yeah, I'm just trying right. to get And then it blew. And he was like, damn, I probably should have renegotiated that contract. Right. You know? And now he he doesn't even get the chance to negotiate something you else. Go, yeah, because you can't go back in. You can't yeah. go back in. Yeah. Or just period because of the strike. He, he, they can't even say, well, you wrote skit games. We're going to have you write something else because right. of the strike. Right. Yeah, the right. strike is going on. So I've It's like when you audition for a TV show. I don't, a lot of people don't know this. When you audition for a TV show, when you get it, like it'll be 20, 50 people auditioning for a part. And if you beat all those people out and get it, they make you sign your contract before you start filming. So once you, you can't say, oh, I got it now. Now I want to negotiate because I'm the guy that y'all hired. Right. No, you already signed your contract. You already wow. Signed. You already signed for your, your per episode and you already signed all that stuff. That's that's how BET used to do. Yeah, BET, they had some bullshit. You, you worked with them before. Unfortunately, yeah. Whew, Black Entertainment? Yeah. EBT? I did, the, I did Apollo. Uh, it was Apollo Live and... Uh, Husband, real husbands of Hollywood. Right. We were the one and two show, the number one and number two show on the network, and they told me we're not gonna go any further with be with Apollo. And I'm like, it's the number two show on the net. And Apollo could, no, don't even get me started. Apollo can go for 20 years. Yeah. Because there will never be a shortage right, of people that right. want to perform at the Apollo. Right. You will never a day wake up in your life and say there's not a thousand people that want to sing at the Apollo. Today. Right. Did you ever perform? I did. Yeah. yeah. Like like separate from when you were doing the host. When uh, uh, I believe. I believe Mark Curry was the host at that time. Okay. And, uh, amateur night? Or? No, no, no. Oh, I was on you, the show. Was, yeah, you ain't no it, amateur. No, no, no. I was on the show. <laughs> right, I, made it right, right. I didn't get booed. But if you ever see the clip, the lady said, oh, no, you know, you know who was the host? I remember it vividly. Monique was the host at the time. Okay. And uh, somebody had performed, and they went to commercial, and she went to her dressing room. And they're like, you know, five minutes, and they she goes to get hair and makeup, and they start, you know, sweeping the stage down and setting the mic up for me and everything. This uh, is all commercial. And they have the comic out there doing time while they're at the commercial break. And they come back, like, knock on her door. Monique, uh, you have to come out and introduce the comedian. And she's like, I'll be out in five minutes. And TV is timing. TV yeah. Is, so they wait, and like, <laughs> yeah. okay, she said, she said five minutes. And I'm standing at the side of the stage. And comedy is timing. When it's yeah. time to go, you, it's like, it's the same what you do. Same when you're ready to go, you're yeah, ready to like, you come on, man, what's the hold yeah. up? ready to go. So I'm at the side of the stage, like, what are we, what's, what are we doing? Like, now I'm getting, yeah, now I'm getting more antsy, right? Yeah, right? And it's the Apollo. Yeah. <laughs> it could go all the way left. Yeah. So I'm like, come on, like, what are we doing? And they're like, oh, Monique said five minutes. And I'm like, oh, come on. God, man. yeah, I've been waiting my whole life for this. And they go knock on the door again, like, uh, Monique, you have to come out, introduce the comedian, we're ready. And then one of her handlers opens the door, like, she'll be out in a second and closes the door. So the stage manager says, okay, I'll just introduce you from the side of the stage and right. you go out. And anything we want me to say? What do you want me to say? And I'm like, just say from New York City, you know, towards the clubs, comedy scene in New York. Right. Please don't say anything about my brother. <laughs> and I swear to you, if you ever see the clip, if you ever see, if the clip is out there somewhere. Right. If you ever see the clip, she goes, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your comedian for the night. He's honed his skills in New York City, working clubs and around town, and he's Chris Rock's brother. <laughs> and if you see the clip, I'm walking out like this, and I'm walking out. The, the camera hits me, and I'm like, I fucking don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm literally looking this way, then I go, oh, what's up, Apollo? Like, <laughs> but I made it through the set, and I was so mad, and she never came out the room to introduce me. Wow. Yeah. Did you ever, you ever met her and told her that story? Uh, we've met, but I never told her the story. Wow. We met on, uh, I think it was the Tom Joyner Cruise one year. Okay. We met, yeah. But I so never told her now the Apollo, that's Uptown. I've seen you perform at Salsa in the Bronx, yeah. which is, you know, black supported Shout regions. out to Rob Stapleton. Shout out to Rob. So Rob Stapleton live on my block. I don't want to shout out where I live. Oh, yeah? I, yeah, he oh, yeah. Live, but I see Look, Rob Leonard lives on your block too, right? Nah, Lenny, he blew up. He's out of here. <laughs> Len, Lenny, I, I, I got I to gotta send Lenny a DM sometimes. He read it and don't say nothing. I'll be like, yo, bro. Shout out to little bro. Leonard shout out to Lenny, man. Um, but I've seen you do salsa. I've seen you. I didn't see you do the Apollo, but you done. You yeah. do black in Puerto Rican rooms. I've seen you at Caucasian venues. Yeah. What is? How do you approach these venues differently? I don't approach them differently. You don't? I don't. I don't. I, you don't I go tailor your material for a different type of Funny is funny, man. I never subscribe right. to being a black comic. I'm a black man. I'm a black person. Right. All of that. But comedy, comedy I'm, a com I'm a comic. Right. I'm not a black comic. So I, I really write jokes like, yo, this is going to make everybody laugh. Everybody laugh. I right. don't. Now, get me, don't get me wrong. I have some stuff that happens in the black culture that I write about. Right. And I know that's for us. But I write jokes for everybody. Right. Last night I was on stage and I said, uh, 
You know, we've been laughing at each other all summer. Black people and white people have been laughing at each other all summer. We had the first laugh when we saw y'all motherfuckers on that submarine. Because we, we knew it wasn't no niggas on that submarine. <laughs> right. But then y'all had the next laugh when the little black girl was like, it's a baby on the side of the highway. Right. So we was all laughing. at Y'all was laughing at us. We was laughing at y'all. Right. That's not black or white. Yeah. That's just that's, a joke that's just that funny. we both get. You it's know just yeah. funny. It's just yeah. funny. It's funny that you say that. When I, when I got called to do 106, I knew that like, you know, a certain way that I write and the stuff that I talk about is not going to entertain everybody. Right. You know, certain stuff that it only makes sense to us where we from. So I said, if I go up here and be funny, that's going to work right. for everybody. Because a, a good people. joke, right. your, your, your grandmother will laugh at it, yes. your kids will laugh yes. at it. So I, yes. that's funny that you say that. So that was because that was my approach. You might be. I think you're doing yourself a disservice if you try to write white or try to write, write black. Right. Because now you're leaving out a whole group of people that's like, I don't. I don't get it. Right. But just if you if you write across the board, then you get everybody. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's that's where I think that y'all kind of have the advantage as comedians because y'all kind of get to tweak every time y'all are on stage. With us as battle rappers, we just got to get up there. You got one No, but time here's, to what, try here's where y'all have the advantage. Battle rap. You get to say the line, get the oh shit, and then say the line again. Start from there. But it better be good. But y'all, you know what I'm saying? Y'all be like, I said, I put him in a ham hock. And it's like, oh, wait, I said, I said, I put him. And it's like, wait, how you get to start over again? But we don't get to say a joke, get to laugh and go, nah, hold up. I said, <laughs> right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right, you get to right. say it again. But it better be good because if it falls flat, you done wrote this 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 rhyme that you think is going to hit. And then it, you say it and then in a room, it, like that would take the wind out out of you. That'll <laughs> fuck up your whole round. You'll be like, God damn, I thought that that was going to hit. Then it'll be something that you, oh, that was just something that I threw in there just right. to extend it. And then it'll, ah, you'll be like, damn, y'all been on that, but y'all ain't you like that. You ever set a line and you thought it was going to kill and it just fell flat? Yeah, and I'll be like, that shit will take the, uh, not You're like, damn, they didn't get it? Like, you want to explain and, it to them? And I've, when, when I see battle rappers do it and it doesn't work, like, I I could see it in their eyes where it just takes the whole air out of you. You'd be like, damn, like y'all ain't like that. That's some of the best shit I ever wrote. And you got one time to say it. Right. So right. I was like, with y'all, yeah, it, you might it might fall flat, but you could go and do it again. Yeah, doing it somewhere, somewhere else. else. Right. And right, you're like, right. all right, all right, see, I knew it wasn't that bad. Right. Us, we just could watch it again. Like, man, hey, they, y'all ain't know no better, man. Man. So this last one, this is actually the scent that I have on today. Okay. Which one is this? This is. Thigh means Royal Sapphire. Okay, these are all niche houses. They all cost a couple dollars. This is good. Okay, so this is actually a wow. cologne that I bought um, with my stimulus check. All right, they were sending out them stimmies. It was the last stimmy. I didn't get to wear it as often as I wanted to that summer. That's so I, I make sure I put it on as often as possible. What's in this days. one? What's in here? Okay, so that's got mandarin orange, bergamot, orange blossom, jasmine, amber, and oak moss. So it's got two different yeah, components no of the orange in there at two different times. Um, to me, the notes don't really do it any justice. Like, I don't think it's what they say is in it. I don't think that's what it smells like. To me, that smells like what a pearl would smell like if you sliced it. You know, a lot of times when it comes to fragrances, it's not just about the smell. Um... Uh, there are some notes that are textures, like mm. there's cashmere, there's leather. So um, that's something that I often wear. Um, when we wrap this up, because like I told you, um, you got the opening note, so it's going to smell one way when you first right. smell it, and then it's going to smell another what way. What is it? Opening heart base. Ba exactly. Got gotcha. you. Okay, so, damn. You went I was a good school, student, man. Yeah, I was a good student, bro. Yeah, I was just saying, man. Hey, you, I thought you went to public school, man. So, um. Like I said, my slogan is she's going to pay more attention to that cologne than she does that Gucci belt. Yeah. Um, which is real. Which is very real. Very true. Um, and it's a, you know what, like a, and tell me, correct me if I'm wrong, like your scent is almost like a personality trait. Like, yes. So she, when she smells that, it's like, oh, he smells like, she forms an opinion based right. on the scent. You know what I mean? That's why you got to make sure you spending a couple dollars on your scent and you're not going to get those scents that everybody got. Because if you got something that that everybody wears, you come around, right. your, your first date, you wear the cologne that her ex wore. Right, now you right, walk right. in, 
God, this dude smells like my ex. So it don't right. matter what go you you fighting an uphill battle from right. me. Plus, or, there's no personality to a no Gucci belt. No personality. It, right. Everybody can wear a Gucci belt, but that don't make you fly. You think just because you have that on, you fly, but you got to fly is inside. Exactly. And I think a scent says more about you being fly than than the Gucci belt. Exactly. So I've gotten, I've gotten action off of the way that I've smelled. I've gotten action off of my talents. Are there comedy groupies? What, bruh? We got more groupies than anybody. More than groupies than anybody? We got more groupies than anybody. Because you making them laugh. Rappers, uh, y'all are like, you know, people have a, people have an idea of what rappers are. Like y'all, some of y'all are violent. Some of right. y'all are, you know, uh, aggressive. And comics is, man, everybody want to laugh. Right. You asking a hundred girls what they look for in a mate. I want a guy to make me laugh. Right. 99 of those girls, I want a guy to make me laugh. That right. hundredth girl is going to say, I want a nigga to choke me, but. That's just right. her thing. <laughs> right. That's her thing. But right. everybody want to laugh. Man. Yeah, you because yeah, you when when you went to drink champs, you had a bunch of joints with you. I mean, yeah. So are, are you married now? Because hey, you, man, so the you didn't bring mean, no joints here with me. Not mean Royal Sapphire. <laughs> Tell me about the not mean Royal Sapphire. <laughs> that, like I said, that is one of my favorite joints. I said, man, it just would have been nice if we had. No, that was that was a. Uh, that was a that was a different time. That was right? Super Bowl weekend okay. in Los Angeles. Okay, it was the Super Bowl was going on that weekend. Right. I was in LA. It was mad parties everywhere. Right, I was floating from party to party. I would grab a joint there, say, "Yo, come me to the next joint." Grab a joint there. Come okay, me to the next. so when they called me to do it, it was like last minute. I think somebody had fell out, and they were like, "Yo, you want, you free to do it?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm. Can I bring some? people? I got people with me." Right, and Nori was like, "Yeah, bring them." And so I was like, "Yo, y'all want to go do drink tamps?" They was like, "Let's go." And they pulled up. Man. So it was a good luck. Yeah, it was a real good luck walking up in there. I, I, well, you know, like I me, mean, you might have been funny enough when you <laughs> found that special person, and you can't do that no but more. But look, now I can add to it and add the add the Renaissance. And right. This so far, this was my winner. This is my winner. That's the one. So we're gonna three? Yeah. we're gonna revisit that and see what it was you and because you like the opening, you might not like how it dried yeah. down though, because you got the opening and the dry down. All right, so. This situation that happened with your brother and Will Smith, where we from? Yeah, that type of shit happens often. Yeah, you you telling a joke, somebody takes it a little too personal. Right. Has that's that like ever... that's like the basis of 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 joking in the hood, like in snapping, the hood. Right. Rank, right. Right. snapping, ranking, whatever you call it, Jones and right. That always happens. Always in that, happens in that forum, not on the highest televised event. In history, you know right? What I mean? Not, not there, right? And I think your brother summed it up the nice way when he said, "Yo, we not, we not supposed to fight in front of white people." Exactly. But I, what I wanted to know is, has that ever happened to you where you was digging too deep into somebody and you making everybody laugh and somebody took it too personal and and how did you handle it? That yeah. happened to me one time. Uh, it didn't go that far, but I was in L.A. This was like my first week in Los Angeles, right? And I'm a New York comic. I don't know that they play that red blue stuff. To the heart, right? I'm I'm just telling jokes, and there was some cats in the room that was blue, and some cats over there that was red, and I'm joking back and forth. And they in the room together. Yeah, and they was you know doing they throwing they across the room. Yeah, all right, nigga, like, oh pussy head, nigga, boy. and I'm like, oh y'all serious with that man? Like, come on, man, y'all niggas just just why don't y'all go play somewhere? Go play basketball or something. Like, <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying shirts and skins, nigga. Like, what we doing? Right. And one of the dudes was like, nah, man, we don't play with that. And I'm like, all right, calm down, bro. It's a comedy club. Right. And he was like, nah, we don't play with that, bro. And I was like, all right, first of all, bro, like, we don't do that here. This is comedy. We, right. And I'm going back and forth with him, but I'm being funny. And he's like, all right, I'll see you after the show. And when the show was over, that motherfucker was outside waiting for me. And then it was a couple of Mexican cats. This is how crazy that gang culture is in LA. True story, I swear to God. It was a couple of Mexican dudes that was in the room and they was like, hey, yo, fool. Like, you know how they talk. Yo, yo, fool. Yo, we don't fuck with those dudes either, man. Yo, we got your back, bro. And those dudes made a phone call and some Mexican dudes pulled up. And I was like, yo, hold up, bro. This is just comedy. It ain't that serious. Word. And when I walked outside, I was like, I got to go outside because I right. can't be like the dude that's like won't come outside. So I went outside and the Mexican dudes was there. The red cats and the blue cats was there. And the blue dudes was like, yeah, it's all good, man. Like, yo, you know, you said you're from New York. You don't know, bro. But we right. we don't play with that, bro. And then the Mexican dudes was like, yo, we got you, bro. And I was like, all of this over jokes? Like, y'all really take this serious? You, you smack dab in the I, middle was, of I was like a week in, my first week in LA. It was like my fourth day there. And I was like, oh, they really, they, yeah. really, really take that shit serious. Right. Because, uh, you know, growing up in New York, we didn't have no gang culture when we were then, young. Yeah, when we right, were young. Right. When we was young, it was like, we thought that was like, 
Man, we don't do that, man. Yeah. It's like we kind of was like that was it was corny kinda, to us. it was almost funny to us because right. the only thing we saw was on television, and we saw the, the way they looked. We were so Jerry opposite Curl, that we were right. like, yeah, Jerry it was, curls it was and, exactly. and the big shades, like right. the blue blockers. We like, right. no, we don't, <laughs> we don't do that. So it was actually like we we shunned it, right? At back then, so now right. the, the, that New York has a gang culture is actually kind of weird to me. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is, it's, it, and it's the same way you said, like how they take that so serious out there. That's how now, like, because New York gang culture has been here since 93. So yeah. it's people that's so deep in it. In the beginning, like, we kind of had a choice. Like, bro, we not doing that shit. Right, right. You know what I mean? I'm not, right. yeah, I wear this red. It ain't got nothing to do with yeah. no gangs. You yeah, know no I mean? affiliation. I right, like, none I whatsoever. But yeah. now it's so dug in. Like, you see people getting indicted and gang injunctions and stuff right. like that. So it's kids in New York that's not playing with this gang shit nowadays. And literally right, but kids. The, like you said, they they love it. They love it. Right. The man, they love it. Right. Because they're like, that's easier... That's e it's easier for us to, to put you on put you on some charges. And they catching them with the like them Ricos was made for the mafia. Right. Like that wasn't right. even made. Like they was, right. they looked at us. But like, if y'all want to be an organization, yeah, we will consider y'all too. Yeah, we, we gonna we gonna lock y'all up too. So since you said that, like growing up in New York, there were no gangs. But that was a time when New York was 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 New York. It was gangs. It wasn't like. The Bloods and Crips, yeah. It was, it, like, it, it was like you represent your block, right? Or you represent your your the park that you. And we talking, we talking crack era. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is the worst time in New York. This is ever. dangerous New York. This is the New York that they tell you to to beware. The of. worst time. The ever. worst time in New York. How do you navigate out of these type of situations to to where you get on the path? Because this is these this is early stages of your career. Right. Right. How right. do you get on the path? That got you this far, because I'm pretty sure you got friends that in jail. Oh yeah, died, oh yeah, stuff oh yeah. Like that, yeah. This I got, was a dangerous. I time. saw one of my homeboys uh, back in the day. May he rest in peace. I saw him get his head blown off, like literally in Brooklyn. My, right on the corner, of Saratoga and Decatur. My mother sent me to the store. I'm coming out the store with the brown paper bag with the groceries. Right. My boy standing there. I, I used to play basketball every day. We would play ball all day, and then coming back on the block and play football on the, on our street. But we would play in the park, right. play basketball in the park. And he used to play with us all the time, but then he started getting money in the street and stopped. So I'm coming out the store with a bag of groceries, and he's like, "Yo, you still playing ball?" Y'all like, "Yeah, hey, you ain't coming out there, man. You you too busy getting money." He had stupid like he was like the four finger ring, Big Daddy Kane look. Right. look you know what I'm saying? The the cuts in the eyebrows, trying to wild out, mm -hmm. standing by the payphone with the pager on, like that was his his office. Right. And he's like, "Yo, I might come out there today, man." I'm like, "You ain't coming you ain't out there." Coming man. He's out like, there. "What time y'all gonna play?" I'm like, "Around three o'clock." Well, let me see how today go. I might come out there, and I'm walking across the street. And you know how you walking around your neighbor. The summertime in New York, I'm walking, yeah. I'm watching girls, I'm kids is playing. And I turn back and look back, and when I look back, I see the dude jump out the car. Got him, right? Got him, and he go for the reach. The homie on him already. He oh, go for yeah. the reach. Boom, and I just start running like, oh shit! Like just saw my boy. It's your man. My man. Or out of here. How old were you? 14, 15. So how do you? What you have, you come from a good family? Is yeah. it your no, brother? No, so I got I have I have seven brothers. Right. Um, I got a baby sister. My parents were both in the household. My dad was hard. My, my father worked 80 hours a week. My father worked two full-time jobs. Right. My father worked eight hours, come home, take a nap, go back to his other job, work eight hours. Right. Always poured into us that we was great. We could do anything. That our, that our surroundings didn't dictate our journey. So just because you see that outside the window don't mean that's your life. Right. Your life is somewhere else. Always, they poured into us. My mother was a school teacher. Right. She emphasized reading, education, speaking properly. That's why I correct people when they talk. Sometimes I'll be like, right. "That was the most stupidest thing." I'm like, "Bro, that's not a word." Like, yo, I hate. <sighs> yeah, I do that all because my mother was, would do bro, that to us all the time. People be they using words that I'll be like, "That's not what that word yeah. means, bro." Sure, like, I'll, then that's like, see, that, 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 that plays that into my comedy too because I'll be on stage. Uh, last week I was on stage and the girl was like, "Where Chris at? You should have brung him with you." And I was like, "Brung him, sweetheart." Uh, Brung him. Right. I was like, spell brung. Right. And I'm like in the room, I'm doing that, and everybody's laughing. I'm like, nah, I'm sorry, baby. I'm an asshole. My mother was a school teacher. I have to right. do that sometimes. But yeah, my, we had the family structure was there. Uh, I had a ton of cousins. My father's the oldest of 15. Okay. So I had a gang of uncles and aunts that would always come by the house, and right. it, was, it was always like so encouraging you had, us. You had love in your house. I had a lot you of love. A lot of love in your house. A lot of love in my house. And, uh, we played sports right. that developed, you know, that I can do it. I'm, you know, teamwork. The team, the team aspect, and that makes a big difference. Like you know, I remember being younger and having that friend whose house I could go over and smoke weed. And I, I come in the house high. My mom, 
Weed is legal now. I come in yeah. the house high, my mom just yell a little, you the yeah. fucking up, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? And I want to be over my friend whose mom's just letting us smoke in the room. But now you get older and you see how that kid turned out. Right. And it's like, I'm glad that my mom's was like that. My house was the house that we had all the video games. Right. We had... Uh, we had baseball gloves, we had footballs, we had basketball. Right. My pops had my pops was like, I don't want them to have to go anywhere for anything. Right. So our house was the house when Christmas Day, all my friends over there, because we had Because y'all had everything. Atari. Right. We had uh Nintendo. And we, that's that's love, and man. My mother like, was people, like, as long as they here, they right, got right. trouble, they good. Yeah, that's you know, it's a lot of people that, you know, they don't really get that. I had a friend who, you know, he he's a bully, man, and yeah. he just he was my man. I ain't had to worry about him bullying me. But like, <laughs> I used to be like, why you hit that nigga, man? Right, you tripping. Right. And we got older, and he told me, he said, listen, I was getting hit at home. Oh, you know? I'd go yeah. home. My, my, if I went home and my dad was away, because he, he'd be at my house. It was one time he was at my house. I said, yo, bro, you got to go. My mom's coming home. So there was another dude there. He said, all right, if I got to go, whoever come out this house behind me, getting their ass whooped. I said, I, I said, bro, wow. so now the other kids, they don't want to leave because they think <laughs> he going to whoop their ass. I said, yo, y'all got to go. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So he told me, he said... I did that because when I if I if I, I got to go home, I'm going to get fucked up. Yeah. I'm going to get fucked up. So now everybody got to get fucked up. Yeah. He didn't tell me this till years later, and it just it let me realize like like the difference. And like I said, I had that structure. My I, my parents weren't necessarily together, but I had love in my house, and right. I had that structure. And you know, you like, oh come on, why are you why are you sweating yeah. me that type of shit? Yeah, yeah. But it made a big difference in in my upbringing. So it's dope to hear that, you know. That that you got that early on and it yeah. and it led you to the success. Yeah, they even encouraged my parents even encouraged the stand up. Like when I would uh I would listen to like remember they had record collections back then. Right. Your parents had records. Yeah. And I would listen to like Bill Cosby and and uh, Richard Pryor and right. George Carlin and I would go to school the next day and tell the jokes. Right. And then I got in trouble because I was cursing, and one of the teachers was like, "Hey, he's uh he's 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 in very entertaining." <laughs> but he's telling Richard Pryor jokes and he's like saying blue, you know, words that he shouldn't be saying. And right. my mother was like, "Are you listening to?" Look, we came home. Are you listening to this? And I'm like, "I was listening to it the other night when y'all was gone." And she's like, "That's his job. He gets paid to do this. You can't right. do this." And then when I saw Richard Pryor on TV for the first time, I was like, "Wait, that's the guy from the record." And she said, "Yeah, he does TV. He does movies. He does this." And I'm like, "Damn, he does all of that. Like, I want to do that." Right. And it was like, but I was, you know, I was in public school. I was like fifth, sixth grade. But I was like, damn, he does TV, movies, this. I see him on commercials. This guy is the greatest guy ever. Like, right. And then Eddie Murphy came years later. And he was young and cool and he looked like us. And I'm right. like, oh, shit, this dude does it too? And then when my brother started doing it, the guy in the next room was doing it. That's right. what made it real. I had never met Eddie. I had never met Richard. Right. They were like ideals to me. They were like almost like superheroes to me. Yeah. But when my brother started, it was like, yo, the guy right there that I can touch and talk to, yeah. he's doing it too. So that's when it made it real. Like, oh, I can, I really can do it. Right. And that was it. So nepotism. Yeah. Nepotism will take you places sometimes that hard work won't necessarily get you. Right. But it seems like you shy away from that. You yeah. do the work. Yeah, yeah. At yeah. what point do you say... I'm not going to use my brother's success. I'm going to do this on my own. Because you really pound the pavement. Yeah. Like I said, that's yeah. why to me, I just think you getting them reps in more is what makes you like, you You getting this 10,000 yeah. hours, you're a master yeah. at this shit. I tell, you know what? I tell younger comics when they ever they ask for advice, yo, how can I, yo, get your shots up, man. Right. Colby shot, five, everybody else shot 1,000, Colby shot 5,000. Right. Somebody shoot 5,000, Kobe going to shoot 7,000. So at what point do you say, I, look, I'm, I'm doing this on my own. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to ride these coattails. If you ride coattails, you, not, you, you lose all credibility with your peers. Right. I never wanted to be the comic that walked in a comedy club and they go, nah, because it's hard. Well, not for him, you know, but right. it's hard. Right. I never wanted to be discredited by my peers. I wanted to do the open mics. I wanted to do the bringer shows. I did the barking. Barking is when you stand outside a comedy club and solicit the audience. Yo, right. comedy show starting in five minutes. My man, you and your girl want to come in? Y'all need yeah, like I see they do that like on 40 Yeah, seconds. yeah, that's yeah. barking to okay. get, a, get an audience. And you I did, did that. I barked. I did bringer shows. I did bringer shows where you get as many minutes as people you bring. So if you bring five people, you get five minutes. You bring right. 10 people, you get 10 minutes. Some nights I had one friend that would show up and I'd be like, please, can I get two minutes? Right. I one friend, right. can I please get two minutes? <laughs> right. And they'd be like, all right, man, you brought one friend, but you count, get two minutes. Count, count me and him as Yeah, the, like I'll pay right. to be a, one of my own 
audience members, you know, like right. I did all that, bro, because I never wanted people to say, yo, he didn't do it the right way. Right. So and and then that on top of getting my shots up, I knew getting my shots up would make me better. Right. So I still to this day, now I'm so it's so ingrained in me, I don't know how to not do to it. Not you know do it. Right. So 25, 20 plus years in, 23 years in, if I'm not on stage for three days, I'm like, yo, what the fuck am I doing? Like, I I don't know what to do myself. Like, it's so my natural instinct now is like, even with the baby, I got a three-year-old son, you know, take him to school, come home, write, think of ideas, read the paper, watch the news. How much writing you doing every day? Uh, I try to write every day. I, I, I don't put a limit on how little or how much. Right. I just try to put paper to pen every day. And I literally still write paper and pen. Right, right. So it's like- Even take, if it's just one joke. Even if it's an idea. An idea, right. If, idea, if right. it's a, uh, like, you know, submarine. I'm like, I got to do something with that because right. everybody's talking about it. Right. And then I'll come back to it later that night when the baby sleep or I'll go to a comedy club that night and sit upstairs and watch some comics and I'm like, all right, okay, let me go up. And I'll just go on stage with just that. Like, yo- Y'all seen this submarine, man? Like, right. it's crazy. And then people start laughing. I'm like, okay, like, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Like, that's, that's so white. Like, <laughs> right. like, black people don't do stuff like that. We, right. ain't gonna, we don't want to see the Titanic. Right. <laughs> we, don't, we don't care. We saw the movie. Yeah. We saw the documentary. We don't need to go see it. Right. Why y'all always want to see shit? Right. <laughs> and I'll just let that go. And then I'll record it. And that night, I'm like, okay, I got some stuff here. And the next day, I'm getting my shots up on that same topic. Right. Submarine, submarine, sub, you know what I mean? And you're just reworking it every room. And one day, it's... 30 seconds, and the next day it's two minutes, and the next day it's five minutes, and then I got a 10 minute bit about the submarine. And then when you see me at Salsa, you'd be like, yo, that shit was crazy. Right. But it started out from just submarine on a piece of paper. So you're not doing no shit. Cause like I said, I really, I, I, I tell Lenny, like, yo, bro, I'm gonna watch this fucking show, and I'm just gonna make rhymes out of all the jokes. <laughs> like, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm gonna do. Yeah, like, yeah. That's what, cause like people talk about, like, when Biggie said, oh, you look so good, I suck on your daddy's dick. Oh, then and now it's pause culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But people don't know that was a that was Richard Pryor joke. Right, you right, know? right. So, and imagine the first time you heard that. How, right. How groundbreaking that was for a comic to say, like, yo, you heard. That made Richard Pryor, like, out of this world. Because right. nobody said nothing close to that before that. Right. You know so you're not, you're not doing no shows in New York? No, I just I did, I did a set last night. I did a set. I just okay. popped in and jumped up for 10 minutes. But right. I didn't want you to come all the way out. For me to do five, ten minutes. Bro, you, know you never in New York. And it's the first time I seen you on my leg ain't fucked. Every time I yeah, seen yeah, you these yeah, legs, yeah, 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 yeah. I had a surgery on my knee, told my Achilles it's the first time <laughs> I got two working legs, man. <laughs> like for real. So if I could, if I could, like I said, man, it's very you, you really a master at what yeah, you bro. do. So. I, I really love it. Like I really, really to this day still love it like I'm a I'm a new jack. Right. Now I, I could definitely see that. And like I said, it's times where I'm looking on people's stories. They could be in LA. They could be in Ohio. Yeah. Y'all just saw Tony Rod. And they always yeah. say, he's funnier than his brother. Like he's- this weekend, I'm going to Vegas for the fight, but I got homies that work in Vegas. And I'm right. like, yo, can I stop I, by I Friday and yeah, just jump up? up like, right. Let me do some time Friday. Oh, come on, bro. I'm, a, I'm like, Friday and Sunday, I'm already got spots because sun- Saturday night I'm a bit to fight. Right. But Friday, I'm there. Sunday, I'm there. I'm like, hey, we got a special guest, Tony Rod. I'm just walking right. in with the pad. Like, all right, let me try these. All right, y'all have a good night. But I just got to do it. Right. I, you find, but, uh, I saw a homie on a. On uh, Math Hoffa, what's my what's my man with the dreads? Mecca. Mecca. Right. He said, when you find the thing that that you love, when the, when the, when you find your calling, and the thing that you love to do in life, it will consume you. Like you man. can't do nothing else, bro. You, you, it's all you want to do. You I, have to find time for the rest of your life, because this thing has taken over everything. I I try to stop rapping. I couldn't stop rapping if I tried. Dude. I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a think about rhymes in my dreams. I'm going to wake up and just go, yo, you thought about that? I'm going to be on a toilet. I'm going to see something. Like you I said, have, you see I have an idea. Like, We're going to talk off camera. I have okay. an idea. I told another one of my homies this idea, excuse me, <clears throat> and he was like, yeah, we should do it. But he never really was gung-ho about it. But right. I'm going to tell you when we get off camera. Right, I got an right. idea. I want you to revisit each one of these scents and let me know your one, your two, and your three. So this is Creed. Uh, Listen, the the uh, what was the 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 discovery the, set? No, what's the heart and base? What's okay, the, so this you got the the top. The top the, of this one top was note. amazing. Right. The top was amazing. Vacation in a bottle is what is usually described as. So where am I now? Is this the heart or the base? You're probably still in the heart. The base is gonna be like what you smell like when you go home. It's good. Still good. You still like that Creed yeah. Virgin Island water. 
It's got it's like almost like a pina colada. Yeah, you know? it's real. Uh, it's got the ginger in you it. Say it, you know, when you put the words to it, I smell it, and I'm like, I can see what he's saying. It's the coconut in there. Saying. Yeah, it's the coconut. Yeah, that's good. Man. So, and you got Zerjoff Renaissance. Oh hell, this is still man. That's your number one. It sounds like this is the heart. Probably still on the heart. Yeah. Boy, this is good. Yeah, yeah. This is this is that yeah, white tea, white tea weather. Bucket on. Ooh. Yeah, this is number one. That's number one. You didn't you got you still gotta Nah, that's it right there. That's it? Oh god. Hey. I got a I got a hug. I got a, a 30 second hug one day wearing that. <laughs> All right? I, I, she just didn't want to let me go when I had that on. Yeah. She said, What you got in that bid? Yeah, this is one. That's one. So this is your number one, Zerjo of Renaissance. Probably gonna go two. This is your number two, yeah. and this is your number three. Okay. And it's a close two and three. It's like it's like one and tied for two. Like I said, I always say people ask me what's your favorite cologne. I always say my favorite cologne is whatever scent I'm wearing that day. So I got this on today. So for now, that's my favorite cologne. Yo, you picked three good ones, bro. I mean, like, I had to, I had to come with the bangers, on, man. You on roll with either one of the, with any one of these. Yeah, I had to come with the bangers, man. And like I said, you you know you a goddess, you know mostly warm weather. So I want you to step your collection up. You know you you gotta wash your ass. I always say yeah, that, man. Not, y'all cannot just be spraying on cologne. On yeah, y'all can't just be spraying on cologne. I know Tony's grown man. He got good hygiene, but yeah. my my young fella, I remember being in my twenties. You know you. Staying a night at your man's house. You in the run, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, two nights that you go to this girl house, you brushing your teeth with your finger. You know what I mean? We can't, fellas. That that's not ideal. You know what I mean? These ladies is really washing themselves, taking care of themselves, yeah. and y'all going to give them BV, man. So make sure y'all washing y'all ass. Make sure y'all stepping y'all collection. None of up. this works without a clean ass. None of this works without a shower. Right? <laughs> this just is not gonna work, man. Tony, I appreciate Come on, you, bro. man. All Thank you, you know man. You, you know always told me, yo, listen, just keep going. Anything you need, I'm there for you. And and I, I mean, I'm talking, I didn't even have to wait. I told you what I was doing. I was like, you bro, said, I'm bro, there. book I'm there. it. He said, book it for three o'clock. I said, bro, we black. I'm gonna book it for 3 30. <laughs> you know, so um remember, I don't do this for views. This is the news you could use. Keep your distance, mind your business, step your collection up.